the disruptions. Why is it that people keep being discontent? Could there be reasons for all of that? If that is my latest statistics from what I got from the United Nations Environmental Program, you know, data base, my 2021, the conflicts in all of these places is because there is lack of humanness. Lack of humanness. Lack of what you call care. Lack of what you call empathy. Lack of what you call understood one thing. And what are these? In the humanistic discourse, I will not take you through the theories, but I will mention that every system exists, every social, cultural, social, political, social, economic, social, political, social, religious, in the context of what you call the social institutions of society, there is one thing. If there is no womanness, if you like and use the pedestrian language, there is no woman fits. Definitely there will be what contentions. Definitely there will be what crisis. Definitely what you call in one word conflict. Yes, we agree that conflict is pervasive. And so I said, it might be. We are unique beings, human beings. Human beings are unique beings. And of course, we should be recognized as such. And if we are recognized as such, we should be treated as such. How could you, or how can you speak that communities where the golden air is made still suffer some of the worst prices in the context of what I mentioned? Go to these areas. Is it what you talked about? Diversity is there to use a small wall and you want people to survive there. You have what you call the gas flaring. You have, in fact, the ecology of the place is in disaster. Let me use one theory or two. There is it's called Carl Rogers. Carl Rogers in 1947 said that every human being has an esteem value. Every human being value. It we are used of what we call existential. Man recognizes himself and society does say. Carl Rogers said so that we all have that esteem value and because we have esteem values with the The reason I use that is because I want to tell you that there is dignity in every human being. Human values, human dignity. And so, if you don't give it to me, it becomes a problem. Don't derail from the topic. The problems of what you call the oil producing communities and gas producing communities is simple. I can tell you to articulate them and they're very clear. Without going anywhere, I am sure that where we are taking this lecture, the air we breathe in is not the air that is supposed to be what we should. The reason is given. We are powering this place with an energy worked by somebody's mental state, but not recognize that it's a being. Let me take you then to a core perspective of my paper. Why the humanistic is very key. The reason the humanistic is very key to me is the fact that Abraham Maslow in the systems, in the hierarchy of other names, he propounded the theory of humanism of people that didn't understand, of what you call the hierarchy of other names. He gave five steps of that. 
And the five steps, I will mention them. One, in the order in which they came. Number one, he said physiological needs. The physiological needs, the second, I will talk about them. The second, he said safety, and I will relate them to what we have as a problem. For love and belongingness. Then we have a fourth one which we call esteem and the fifth we call self-actualization. I extracted this to make you realize that these are issues in humanistic science. I use this, I use Carl Rogers, which are principles. What do you need in terms of physiological needs? You will later ask the question. Physiological needs, air breathing, food, shelter, clothing, ordinary. You call it ordinary, but it is not ordinary. If what we have as residents in the oil and gas communities in the Niger Delta, food, shelter, clothing, I brought in breathe. When you breathe, you're breathing. Expression, physiological needs for humanness, for the human being, for humanity. That is one need. One need that leads to the other. You will relate that. Safety, security of your body in the context of safety, the security of your body, your health, property. What? Gives you even safety more. Employment. Do you have employment? These are issues. Safety in the context of resources, you have them. The talk, which we call love and belongingness, he spoke about what you call friendship. He spoke about what you call family. He spoke about what you call social intimacy. All of these things that were mentioned. I hope that you are looking at it from what you call humanism. You and I. It takes a human being to invent. It takes a human being to innovate. It takes a human being to think. It takes a human being to conceptualize. And so you have you need some things which are pragmatically supposed to be necessities when you have what you have, like what they have in the Niger Delta. The fourth as a statement. Then we speak about what you call sex, as if there is no morality in science. Because if there is no morality in the social sciences, then we cannot ask question of what, why, where, when, how. It is a, it is a. Get me right. If there is morality in the social sciences and humanities, and there is morality in science, and morality in science, then you cannot ask scientific questions of why, what, when, which, how, and all of that. Let me reduce it to the first. The science, scientific thinking, the guns you use to fight the wars, the physical wars. If there were morality as it were, if morality were to constrain inventors, from your thought process, we wouldn't have had them. But what we do now is to control some of our excesses in terms of what you call immorality. And that's where ethics came in, ethical practices. Coming back now to what you call the Niger Delta question. Look at all these that I've stated. What became the causes and the root causes of what you call this conflicts in oil producing communities. I itemized three and I thought that the three are key to the extent that you can expand them because they have actually had what you call the global recognition. Number one is what you call environmental degradation. Before now, let me get, get it straight to you. Before now, that number one, I said environmental degradation. Before now, 
the people in these host communities never thought that there were dangers to them by way of their environment, even while it only dawned on them when the environment that they depended on became replete with certain biodiversity crises. For instance, oil spills, gas flooding, destruction of the ecosystem, the land, the water bodies in the region all became, you know, problems, what you refer to as the ecological problems. This affected became detrimental, of course. It has consequences, you know, for what you call the agriculture. It has consequences for fishing. It has consequences for traditional livelihoods of the people. So why do you expect, or why don't you expect, that people will react? If people must react, then of course they are trying to save not just their lives, their self-esteem, but their humanity, humanistic science. The second point, the second point, which is the root cause, is what I identified as the social economic disparities. The social economic disparities in the context from the oil explorations and these host communities, like I said, I said the unequal distribution of economic benefits from oil exploration has created social economic disparities between the oil communities and the host communities. Saying that the right things must be done. And of course, all of these are documented in by, by sports.